methods of uh, food storage and preservation rather than relying on the default uh, one of the freezer, convenient as it is. Rather than uh, a photograph of our own cellar, I've included one of a community we visited in Slovenia where they produce all of their own food in a community of 20 people. Permaculture is also about working with animals, both for their yields and their ecological services. Our black australop poultry are an old breed that are suited to free range systems, as well as obviously eggs and occasional meat. They are providing us with the service of fertilising the orchard and uh, helping in pest control. Uh, ducks in a garden pond in suburban Sydney. Uh, Mollison used to say, you don't have a, a plague of ducks, you just have a deficit, uh, a plague of snails, you just have a deficit of ducks. <laughs> Uh, our milking goats um, uh, provide us with all of our dairy products and when I analyse our two goat dairy in terms of the water use efficiency, we use one three hundredth of the water per dollar of value um, that's used in commercial uh, dairy production. If you go to the supermarket in Australia, the dairy products have used 680 litres per dollar of value. We use about two litres per dollar of value. I'd suggest with what I've seen of the explosion of dairying in the semi-arid um, uh, central Otago and Waitaki basins that New Zealand dairy farming is heading in the same direction, uh, actually. Now, of course, the kids do end up in the freezer. Uh, that is the kid in the arms, not the, the kid. Uh, he's actually escaped to Mexico at the moment, he's over there. Uh, Permaculture's been strongly connected with tree crops. The idea that if we can get more of our food from perennials in trees, that would be inherently more efficient in resource use. Uh, these pistachio nuts at Food Forest in South Australia, one of the best permaculture demonstration sites in the country, on what was a burnt out wheat paddock in a semi-arid climate, with very minimal additional drip irrigation, uh, provide high value uh, crops. Of course, as I said earlier, it was actually the New Zealand Tree Crops Association which was one of the first sort of interest points uh, for permaculture in New Zealand. And I've just been back to visit one of the icon properties uh, of the uh, Tree Crops um, Association, that of Dick Roberts' property in Todd's Valley, where permaculture was actually quite a strong influence uh, as well. Not so common in Australia and New Zealand, where we've inherited this uh, dysfunctional culture of being suspicious of any fungi other than field mushrooms, but in many other parts of the world, uh, growing food on decomposing vegetation uh, and biomass is uh, an important part of permaculture. Very important in urban areas of ways of using uh, areas with no light. And the fact that this is sh Japanese shiitake mushrooms growing on oak in the Netherlands illustrates that sort of cross-cultural aspect of permaculture where we take the best solutions from wherever in the world and combine it in a way that suits our local systems. Water and nutrient harvesting, rainwater tanks, uh, gravel reed beds, compost toilets. It's interesting how you get a bunch of permaculturists together over the dinner table and somehow the conversation always seems to end up at shit. <laughs> um, this is actually a very, very important subject. And it's interesting that the work of systems ecologists uh, uh, Gunther in uh, Sweden um, has shown that the long-term sustainability and a low energy future of our cities is actually related to our ability to recycle human waste eventually back to the agricultural land that produces the food for those cities. That might not be an immediate concern in the, the immediate onrush of energy descent issues that we're facing, but in the long term it's fundamental. 
passive solar design and use of natural materials, both in new construction and retrofitting the building stock that we already have. The buildings that people will be living in uh, well into this energy descent future will mostly be the buildings that already exist. So that in a lot of ways is a more important task than the much more fun one of building new buildings such as our own house that get, gets 80% uh, of its heating needs in quite a cold climate uh, from passive solar design. Energy from forest thinnings and uh, wood waste. Uh, it's interesting that in Australia and New Zealand, wood is regarded as a primitive, environmentally um, uh, backward, polluting form of energy. Uh, there's um, a stack of firewood at Rainbow Valley Farm at Matakana, the property that um, uh, Finn mentioned. That firewood has all come from the offcuts from sawmilling of timber on the farm, which has uh, been used to build buildings. In Europe, wood burning technology both at the domestic scale and the industrial scale, is expanding in some countries faster than wind power. Uh, this Austrian wood pellet furnace uh, has a solar preheater system, computer controlled furnace that is 90% thermally efficient um, and easily meets the European clean air standards. Burns these um, uh, wood waste pellets. So we've got a lot to learn in, in this regard. Permaculture often works as a bit of a counterflow to a lot of mainstream environmental thinking. It's all, almost like the, the black sheep um, waving a different banner in relation to some issues. And this is, uh, would be one of them. Frugal transport solutions. Uh, I don't like mentioning new technologies um, that are going to save our uh, addiction to mobility. But I have to mention one, well perhaps because it's not even a new technology, uh, but it's one that always gets forgotten and ignored. Most people are not even aware of this, the wood gasifier. And in countries like New Zealand with their huge uh, forest um, potential, uh, this is a way that people will get around in rural communities, especially in the future. There's uh, a modern Finnish uh, wood gasifier but uh, these were, of course, quite common in the Second World War in many countries when uh, fuel was hard to get and very expensive or just restricted by the government. I remember my neighbour telling me that the weekly allocation for fuel, um, if you had a car in, the, in Australia, was a gallon a week. That's interesting to think of getting by on 4.5 litres of fuel a week. They did. Um, in places where fuel relative to people's wages costs 10 times what it does here, such as Vietnam, people are a little more circumspect about the way they use fuel, such as this 125cc motorbike that's the prime mover for a trailer um, uh, carrying a tonne of sand. Probably doesn't go up steep hills, but... Um, and uh, new technology, um, uh, small electric motors and batteries that provide us with a um, something that can wean us um, off the overpowered motor car uh, towards the, the bicycle technology. Lastly, carpooling and hitchhiking, just making use of all the capacities we've already got in all these uh, empty cars. Creative reuse and 